So, it is September, and thing is, you know, arena football and indoor football and everything of the like, you know, the indoor game does not stop with the insanity. In the past three or so weeks since we had the IFL and NAL championships, things have gotten a little crazy. The offseason really started kicking off with um, a sort of Black Monday type deal. You know, with a lot of coaches, you know, either leaving or, you know, doing off and going off and doing some other things. But, I mean, uh, let, let's just start with the CIF first. That, that, that's simple. Um, it was announced that the Wichita Regulators um, are going to be the newest team in the CIF. And they are going to be playing in Hartman Arena, which is where the Wichita Wild played from 2009 to 2014, and where the Wichita Force was supposed to play in 2020 before COVID happened. And keep in mind, the Wichita Force still exists. So, you know, the Regulators and the Force are in the same city, uh, two different arenas. And uh, I don't know how this is going to go down, but it's going to go down. But it seems to be that the CIF will start their season March 11th. Of course, I'll probably have this week in indoor football start the week before then. So that first week of March will be right back up with this week in indoor football going all the way to whichever championship is last. Either the IFL or the NAL or both. You know, hopefully not like this this year uh, for 2023. And yet again, the CIF is, while we're still talking about CIF, they're looking for a new commissioner, looking for a new head of officials as well. And there's one thing else that could be happening, but we'll talk about that in a moment. Rapid City, they've got a new logo. Billings, now they're confirmed to be at the first interstate arena at Metro Park for three years. So, three-year commitment for Billings. At least three more in the CIF, but there was a casualty in all of this. Topeka, they are they're going under for 2023. They couldn't find new owners. J.R. Bond, who was the commissioner of the CIF, um, who owned the team and also owned Sioux City, uh, he said it was not for financial reasons, but we all know that's pretty much a lie. Um, there is some speculation that they may come back in 2024, but it's probably not going to happen. It's probably not going to happen. This is this is the indoor game we're talking about here, um, and it's it's kind of disappointing, you know, because I mean Topeka really had you know something unique, but ultimately you know things did not work out for them. I mean, I heard that there was even you know like stuff being you know sold, you know like stuff that's from the team that ain't supposed to be sold if you're a stable team is getting sold if that makes any sense so disappointing there what's not disappointing is the potential for the CIF to bring back Nets and rebrand as Arena League One now who knows if this is going to happen in the CIF or not but I don't know we'll find it out soon in the IFL Nothing really much has changed. Um, a couple things have changed. Um, there are a few projections by our good old friend Love FB from Arena Fan who says that Columbus ain't going to be playing. Massachusetts might move to Chicago. And speak it up, Massachusetts. They are looking for you know at least another owner. Um, San Diego might go dormant or wait for a new arena in Oceanside called Front Wave Arena which is supposed to be opened up in late 2023 for a soccer team as well out there in Oceanside but that's all projections right now we'll see if that's actually real or not um, Love FB has been pretty spot on so some of this stuff might actually happen and Columbus has still been in limbo for quite some time anyway and Massachusetts, you know, looking for another, at least another part owner. That's that's very concerning. Tulsa, on the other hand, they're 
doing a name the team contest. I have no idea if they've named the team yet. I don't think they have. But the names that are up for consideration are the Tornado, the Crude, the Oilers, which is, again, similar to their hockey team, the Wildcatters, or the Bison. Who, who knows what they'll pick. Quad Cities, they are now, you know, playing at the Vibrant Arena at the market. Still the same arena. It's just been a name change. So there you go with that. Uh, IFL, not too much really to say about right now. Again, IFL's in a nice position. The NAL, on the other hand, you know, a lot of things happened. Uh, the Nets. Unlike CIF, the NAL is bringing back the Nets full-time starting in 2023. Fayetteville's got themselves a logo, a staff, and, you know, Jeff LeBac, he's got a small portion of the Columbus Lions now, and he's got three teams under his belt now. Albany and Orlando are two of the others. I'm not sure if he owns, still owns both of them. He probably still does. But, again, Jeff LeBac has a portion of Columbus and speaking of Columbus Jason Gibson he left Columbus he, he was the head coach for Columbus for quite some time now he's gone over to Jacksonville Sia Burley he got let go Marvin Jones left the Omaha beef via a mutual agreement Jeff Higgins left Orlando and then Tucson for some reason again we're talking about that Black Monday thing they let Dixie Wooten go Curtis Chin will now be the head coach. He was the offensive coordinator for Tucson. Now he's the head coach. So there's that Black Monday stuff I was talking about at the beginning. And then the AIFA. The, now, now they're, they're, they got a Wikipedia page now. So I was able to, you know, see some things from their Wikipedia page. And we'll see if these things actually come to fruition. But if not... Uh, who knows? Who knows? In my personal opinion, I, I genuinely, you know, am afraid, a little concerned, as I should be, because it's the AIFA we're talking about here. Um, we've got an expansion packet um, PDF file on the new Wikipedia page, and it's available. There's some notable things that are on there that the AIFA wants to do, and we already know you know some things that the AFA has wanted to do you know for quite some time now um, there's like you know a potential for a 12 game schedule in 2023 with you know with the playoff a championship game and the all-star game and unfortunately who knows if it's going to be possible you know, four of the five teams look like they're returning. St. Charles doesn't look like they're returning. They never even played last year anyway. Um, so, you know, it is what it is. There, there are going to be league meetings later in September. It'll be September 15th through 17th. Uh, we'll see what the IFA does at, at that point. We'll see what they do. Um, in any case... You know, in any case at all, the AFA's got some things they need to figure out and get done over the course of the next few months. You know, they they they, they got to they got to do something over the next few months. Uh man. And then there's the X League, which again we completely forgotten about here. You know, the X League being the the women's indoor game, which we've completely forgotten about here. I know some people have talked about it, you know, but ultimately at the end of the day, um, it's, 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 it just hasn't been fun. So the Atlanta Empire and the Chicago Blitz will be the two teams in the X League Championship on September the 10th. Or is it the 11th? So, I don't know. It'll either be the 11th or the 10th or whatever. It's happening. I, I could honestly care less at this point. Because, I mean, 
the league, you know, itself had kept its games behind a paywall that you had to pay like eighty dollars for, apparently. Um, and you know, that's that's not feasible at all. You know, nobody's gonna watch it yet. Pay eighty dollars for it, and plus, uh, it it it, it it's kind of hard to watch this league without you know you know just instantly you know. You know, getting the weirdos on here. It's not. It's not as bad as the bots in the chats for the YouTube games, but it's it's real bad when you're down bad for football players that are just playing for the love of money. You know, just down bad behavior. You know, at least the at least the YouTube you know stuff was kind of you know, you know, like we could actually point out who the weirdos are. You know, when you go to the YouTube comments and stuff like that, when you watch the old LFL videos and stuff like that, um, but now you know, like the X League just looks generic. Like the like the whole logo is generic. Everything about the league is generic. It hasn't worked in a decade, and yet it still continues to persist. I already made a video about it some time ago, um, stating my grievances with this league, and ultimately. You know, the X League is what it is. It's it exists. And I totally forgot about it. Cause I mean the teams only play like four games a year, so I mean there's just no point in me talking about it. It's, I mean it is what it is. If you want if you want to watch real women's football, go to the women's football alliance. Now that's a league right there. Alright, give me a moment and we'll talk about the confusing stuff that is going on behind the scenes. Okay, so there has been some confusing things going on behind the scenes. We're talking lower level stuff here. And, you know, and by confusing, I mean I'm confused. Everybody should be confused. Um, it, it, it exists. And the confusion continues as, you know, things go down. So some of these are like fall leagues, late summer leagues, you know, that we have to talk about. Like the Arena Development Football League. Not... The Adult Development Football Arena League. See, it's kind of a it's kind of a tongue twister, but y'all remember the Waco Tornadoes, right? Yeah, they're in this league along with the North Texas Falcons, the Lone Star Pit Bulls, and San Antonio Bounty Hunters being teams. Who knows? If they're actually playing in arenas. Um, the Tornadoes, from what I remember, had you know like one or two arena games, and like the rest of them were outside. So I mean it kind of defeats the purpose of being a arena league if you're playing games outdoors but then again we had the COVID season and we had the four teams that were in the COVID season playing games outdoors you know trying to make an arena size field outdoors and it didn't work and it looked absolutely brutal to watch y'all should know what I'm talking about um but the Adult Developmental Arena Football League, which is a tongue twister in of itself, they started their season the week of the IFL Championship and the NAL Championship. And their teams were playing outdoors, so not arena ball, but it turned out to be a complete disaster. Only one game got played, and who knows if the championship game on September to tip between the Appalachian Wolfpack and the Knoxville Nightbear will even be played um, you got players getting upset you got owners not paying you know their coaches and you, you got the coaches just not coaching you know you got teams folding left and right it was a disaster you know you know the, the whoever's running the page is you know trying to you know clear things up and everything like that but it's it's been a disaster if you only played one game out of however many games we're supposed to be playing, man, it's just it's just disappointing. Speaking of disappointments, I don't know why the Kentucky on a curse have joined the Upland South Indoor Football League. Remember that league that we talked about? Yeah, that league is a thing still. Um, the Kentucky Mafia are in it. You know, we got the Morristown Gators and the Kentucky Bandits, but there's also the Ohio Blitz. So that's more than four teams, by the way. You know, because remember the USIFL said they wanted four teams. So the Ohio Blitz, they got added last week into this league. 
which is you know crazy but it is what it is um the global arena league um david parsons if you if some of y'all remember him he's a guy who tried to do something like this before it's attempting to be formed by him who knows if that's actually going to happen or not but um Probably not, because I mean, it, if it took you four years to try and bring this off the ground before, and it didn't get off the ground, maybe just don't try it again. Maybe just you know sit down, do, do nothing, do something else. And yes, one more thing before I go, watch out for Joe McClinton. He's trying his tricks again. I made a video about him during the COVID year. He's trying his tricks again. If you see the United Football League, you know, on Twitter, be sure to ratio the hell out of that account. I am on his ass. Do not fall for it. Do not try and give him your money. Whatever he's promising, whatever the United Football League is trying to promise, whatever Joe McClendon is trying to promise you, don't do it. Do not waste your money. Do not waste your time. And if you do end up wasting your time and money, go get your money back. Give him a two-piece combo to the face and be on your merry way. You know, because, I mean, this type of scam artist behavior it makes me sick. You know, we, again, we've talked about Joe McClinton on here before. And he continues as, as, you know, like in between from, you know, when I made the video like last year to now... He's still trying. He's still trying to get the United Football League off the ground when he knows it's not it's not a thing, and he needs to just stop and you know just make his own personal Twitter account or whatever. Because I mean, some of those tweets are very, you know, a bit more personal than you know others. But I mean, it is what it is. Like if you see the UFL contact, if you see Joe McClendon try and contact you in any way, shape, or form. Be sure to let somebody know. Let you, hell, big boy sports will be on. It will be on your case. He'll he'll help you out. You know. Um, I know there's other guys out there like my boy, um, like my boy Zach Common. You know, who, who does you know cover a lot of other um, leagues and stuff like that. Hell, tell somebody. You know, tell anybody that has you know. You know that reach, you know that clout, to stop McClendon, stop leagues like the Global Arena League, stop leagues like the Arena Development Football League, and that yes, you read it like like the Ohio State University, the Arena Development Football League. It's stuff like this that needs to stop and needs to not exist in this current landscape. We have better leagues, you know, that actually function a little bit better. But what can what can I do? What can anybody else do? You know. In any case, that's it for the update. Um, next month probably might be light. You know, who knows when I'll upload? You know, the October update. But for now, something's probably gonna happen in between now. You know, by the time I upload this, and by the next time we up upload this and I keep saying we I meant me so until then take care and I'll see you all on Labor Day Monday to recap week one of the college football season because there's a lot that we need to go over there good night good evening good afternoon good morning wherever you may be when you see this big boy sports signing out